So let's move on to the second talk, if I can find it. Yeah, from Carlos Buesa from Horizon Genomics. I, I just met Carlos earlier at lunch, and I was very struck by, by how successful his company has been, so I'm looking forward to this talk, which is called LSD-1, an epigenetic therapeutic target to modulate different, different, um, notice that, neurodegenerative disorders. Carlos, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Good afternoon to everybody. So from the macro view from, to the mic, micro view now. <laughs> um, so um, Horizon is just a, a biotech company here in Spain. So we were uh, founded in 2000, 16 years ago. We are actually one of the first startups of the University of Barcelona. And we are already, uh, we are, today we are a public company um, and developing our own programs on, on, uh, on that discovery. So uh, how this is going on? Sorry. No, to advance, so if you use the mouse. Oh, the mouse, okay. You the left to advance, and then to go back to the right one. Okay, the left to advance. The menu comes up. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, we are basically uh, working on epigenetics. You, as you probably all know, epigenetics is basically the, the way that the cells um, regulate the functioning of genomes, and they do so by a number of post-translational modifications on the histones mainly. It's not the only, um, the only way, but it's one, one of the main ways. And among the different uh, chemical modifications that histones might suffer, um, uh, methylation and demethylation is one of them, and this is the field where Horizon has been specialized in the last years, and we have become one of the global leaders in the area. So I'm going to talk today about epigenetics and neurodegenerative disorders. So neurodegeneration and epigenetics have been linked for many uh, um, uh, observations in the, last, uh, uh, in, in the last years. Among them, uh, it's worth to mention that uh, a number of reports have, the, have, uh, have shown that uh, is that inhibitors are able to improve the conditions of uh, different animal models uh, representing or reflecting different human diseases. The reason why this is that inhibitors have not been able to progress in human clinics is well known, is because uh, is that uh, inhibitors are not selective enough. They have a profile of safety which is not sufficient for chronic settings, and that's one of the main reasons. So we are working on LSD1. LSD1 is an lysine specific demethylase, which uh, is an enzyme. Uh, uh, structurally speaking, it's a, it's a fat-dependent uh, monoamino oxidase, and this enzyme is demethylating the dimethyl and monomethyl form of lysine 4 and lysine 9 in histone 3. And by doing so, it's reorganizing or rearranging the scaffold of chromatin and setting off and setting on, turning on and off uh, a number of genes. Well, we know today that LSD1 is also a partner, a regular partner, very often found in ASDAC1, ASDAC2 transcriptional complexes that are governing the expression of important genes in neural and glial cells. We also know that uh, has been described recently that LSD in, 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 in suppressor screens that LSD1 um, uh, knockout, LSD1 uh, suppression, produce uh, uh, um, uh, enhance the removal the removal of uh, misfolded protein with critical roles in different neurodegenerative disorders. So we have a molecule which is basically a dual inhibitor of LSD1 and MAOB. Um, uh, and which has all the properties or the pharmacological properties that you should ask to a molecule to be promoted, to be moved forward in the clinical development in a CNS human disease. Um, we have is, is oral, we have a good PK and good IME properties, um, has a very nice bioavailability, allowing a, an, an oral regime of only uh, once daily. It crosses very well the blood brain barrier, and we know that this has target engagement in the brain and that is having also a high therapeutic window. So in, with this molecule, we have been uh, able to demonstrate in three different animal models of three different human disorders that we have a proof of concept and the animals improve significantly. Okay, I'm going to show you just a, a glimpse on two of these models, Alzheimer's disease and multiple sclerosis today, and, uh, and to tell you where, where we are right now on this molecule. Okay. 
Um, this is an epigenetic modulator. So we were uh, um, on purpose not wanting to work with uh, transgenic models in which you have an artificial promoter and the chromatin is by definition artificial. So we were uh, deciding to work with a model which was developed in Japan at the University of Kyoto and by breeding, by uh, the old breeding techniques. And these animals, uh, some eight animals, develop an accelerated aging. And in this uh, uh, process of accelerated aging, they start to manifest uh, problems, uh, 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 cognitive impairments, memory, memory, uh, memory uh, troubles, uh, which appear normally at month four, month five. Uh, how it, uh, um, uh, as long as it goes the, the life of the animal, we, we are able to find other manifestations which are also present in the human disease. So on those animals, um, what we have done is basically we have um, treated the animals on month five, starting treating the animals daily, orally, with our drug for two months or four months, and at the end of these period, periods, we were basically scoring the animal for memory performance, and we were taking different parts of the brain to analyze the biomarkers. So uh, we test the animals for a sim by a simple test that you all know, which is a novel object recognition test, which scores the capability of the animal to discriminate between an old and a new object. By doing so, what we see on the black column, this is the normal discrimination index of a normal healthy animal. Uh, this is the parental strain. In the white column on the right, what you see is the discrimination index of these sampaid animals when they are treated with vehicle. And on the blue columns, you see uh, the animals, the litter mates of the sampaid model treated with our compound for two months or four months. As you can see, we are able to restore the basic uh, uh, memory performance of these animals. So that was, this initial, uh, these initial experiments were done at 3.2 milligrams per kilo and 0.96 milligrams per kilo. In subsequent experiments, we were dosing low, lower, and as you can see, we were seeing still a full rescue at 0.32, and at 0.11, we start to see a fading off of the phenotype. Okay. So um, I was mentioning, I'm not going to explain why we were after a, a, a dual LSD1 MAO view, that was some purpose, um, but we were interested in dissecting uh, the, the contribution of both arms on our, on our drug. So by do, for doing so, what we were introducing in subsequent experiments were uh, additional arms in which we were treating the animals either with uh, MAO B inhibitors only or LSD1 inhibitors only. On the left panel, what you can see on the green column is the result of treating the animals with, uh, for two months with a well-known uh, commercialized MAO B inhibitor at concentration where we know that there is full targeting, brain target engagement, three milligrams per kilo. As you can see, we see a small trend, but this is failing statistical power. So MAO B is not really uh, uh, um, driving the effect that we see on those animals. Well, the question then is, why do you need a MAO B activity for? Okay, on the right panel, what you see is on the, on the ochre and on the red column, the effects of treating the animals only with LSD1. As you can see, LSD1 is able to do the job, but uh, in these concentrations, the ochre is uh, uh, having the same relative brain expression than the light blue and the red and the dark blue. What we see is the LSD1 alone is doing the job okay, but is doing the job less efficiently that in combination with MAOB. So MAOB is enhancing the combination of LSD1 plus MAOB inhibition is enhancing the effect. Okay, so what you see here is a recopilation of different experiments that have been done by us and by somebody, uh, an additional people on this strain in the same lab. Um, uh, in the blue, you see the, 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 the memory performance of the uh, normal parental strain, the normal healthy animals. On the red, the memory performance over time in months of that size um, of the females and males of the sunpaid model. So just to, to, um, to, to make a summary of all the work that we have done, when we start treating at MOM5, where we see already a difference between the, 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 the parental strain and the sampit animal, we are able to restore the memory performance. So uh, in this model, at least, uh, uh, these results are suggestive of a possible disease modifier drug. Okay, when we go to the molecular uh, level, uh, if we go to the hippocampus and we, we make an analysis of the gene expression, what we saw is that LSD1 inhibition, or the 2001 inhibition, was producing an increase on genes 
which are associated with improved cognitive function and, uh, and, and, neuro, uh, um, um, and neuro neurological plasticity which is what you would be expecting. But very interestingly, what we saw also was a reduction on the inflammatory, on the inflammatory uh, signal. So we saw the reduction of a number of genes involved in, uh, in inflammation. Among these genes, uh, particularly one was catching our, our attention, which, is, uh, uh, which was S189. Okay, S189 is a pro-inflammatory molecule, is well known, and it's particularly interesting because um, it has been described to be upregulated in Alzheimer patients, but also in, in patients with, with postoperative cognitive dysfunction, we were uh, hearing about that this morning, and traumatic brain injury, okay? So um, there is a relationship uh, which is being worked out between S189 and Alzheimer's disease. In fact, in a number of uh, um, single and double, and double transgenic mice, where there is a combination of the removal of S189 either by uh, uh, lentiviral uh, um, brain injection or by crossing with a knockout mice of S189, what we, ba what we basically uh, get, or the doctors basically describe, is that there is a, an attenuati attenuation on the memory impairment or an improved memory, if you want to speak, and a reduction on the uh, amyloid plaques. In fact, uh, in the last years, there have been also some uh, papers describing a mechanistic uh, correlation, a mechanistic interaction in between S189 and the beta def uh, deposition. Apparently, uh, the, 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 the S189 uh, monomers, dimers, and tetramers are able to uh, interact uh, when they are uh, triggered by an inflammatory signal and produced by the glial cells are able to interact with the protofibrils of a beta and increase the deposition of the abeta uh, plaques, and this in turn increase the inflammatory signal that in turn increase the production of S189, and then we enter in a, in a, in a vicious circle. Okay, but S189 is also a well-known player in uh, inflammation. Actually, um, uh, complexes of S189 and S188 are expressed at re and released at inflammatory sites. So there is a strong correlation between these, these two molecules and, uh, and, uh, and inflammatory disorders. And in fact, in, uh, in, infl in, in, in multiple sclerosis, uh, the Q compounds, the uh, quinoline free carboxamide compounds, which are targeting S189, are being explored uh, pharmacologica, pharmacologically for multiple sclerosis. You might have heard about laquinimod from Teva, for instance. This is a molecule which is as, as 189 inhibitor. So, okay, we were wanting, uh, really, we, we really wanted to, to have an independent confirmation of this interaction between, between ORI 2001 uh, treatment and reduction of S189. So for that, we were deciding to go for an experimental autoimmune encephalitis mice model. In this model, which is a well-known and recognized model for multiple sclerosis, S189 has been described to be upregulated. Okay, this is a very classical model. You basically inject the animal with a, with a peptide, which is uh, triggering an autoimmune encephalitis. So you, you, you insult the animal, and then you, you, you wait till the, uh, till the onset of the, of, the, of the symptoms, and then you treat the animal for two weeks, and you see what happens. There is a well-known clinical scoring system that uh, range from the death of the animal to different degrees of paralysis, and you can score the animal, you can score the potential rescue of your drug. So when we treat those animals for two weeks with our compound, what we get is basically a very uh, profound uh, um, um, uh, protective effect. We see that the animals treated uh, with our compound at two different degrees or at two different doses are really showing a, a reduced disease incidence and severity. We hardly see some, uh, some loss on, 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 te uh, on tail tonicity. So this is also confirming this, the relation between our treatments and the capability to influence on S189 driven, uh, uh, driven uh, phenotypes. And it's also opening the, the, the door for LSD1 inhibition to, uh, to be a, a possible treatment in multiple sclerosis. So, where are we standing now on this, with this drug? As, as I said, um, we have been working very hard in the last years uh, to develop uh, molecules which are basically uh, having all the features that you need to, to become real human drugs. 
So right now, uh, early 2001 is in the middle of a phase one study in, a, in, in, in an hospital in Barcelona, which is a, a, a double blind parallel ascending single and multiple doses trial. So the part of the single ascending dose have already finished. We are halfway of the multiple ascending dose. So far, uh, everything is going very, very nicely. So if everything goes smooth, we should finish this uh, multiple ascending dose by, by December and by, by the the end of this of the next uh, first quarter to, uh, next year or 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 the second quarter ne uh, next year we should be able to have the whole package ready for starting a phase two not only in alzheimer but also in multiple sclerosis okay so um with that i am going to um, to make a mention this is a word that was starting uh, in 2005, 2006, in a, in a seminal collaboration with Isidro Ferrer, where we were, and uh, in those years, we were identifying that uh, uh, UCHL1 was decreasing some, in some areas of the, of the brain with some specific pathologies. Uh, UCHL1 was leading us to LSD1 later on. So from these uh, uh, seminal observations, we have been also working with several groups. I am especially grateful to, to the group of Merced Payas at the University City of Barcelona, where we have been developing uh, the SAMPIT model, but we have been also working in, in, in lately also in the multiple sclerosis with uh, some groups of uh, some people from uh, from the CSIC of Granada, also from some people in uh, in the Autonoma and in the UK, and also all the people that you see here from Horizon Genomics. So, thank you very much for your attention.